Welcome to Laura Diana's Victorian Dollhouse. The house itself was built to accommodate and display a lifelong collection of fabulous miniatures by world-renowned artists, miniaturists, and craftspersons. The first floor was started in 1974 and has blossomed into five floors and 24 rooms of the most incredibly realistic inch-to-foot scaled miniatures ever seen. The display house is over six feet long and five feet tall and was engineered in such a way that it is able to be disassembled by floor. Electrified with over 120 lights, the house is realistically detailed right down to drawers, cupboards, and closets all filled and even shoe boxes under the beds. The main floor of Laura Diana's Victorian Dollhouse consists of a living room, formal dining room and a country kitchen. We enter the living room from the southern porch. This room contains a winding staircase, a fireplace, and two bay windows. It's a traditional Christmas setting. The tree is decorated and glowing with lots of presents under it. Grandma and Grandpa are there keeping warm by the fire. The stockings are full and the mantle is filled with Christmas cards. The mantle clock is an antique cloisonne and it really works. The dining room with its Scandinavian design and hand-painted doors is set up for Christmas dinner. The china is Royal Copenhagen, made in 1979 and signed by Sue Sherrill. It's a priceless 21-piece set, exquisitely detailed to replicate the set brought back from Denmark by my grandparents. The 24-karat gold rim cobalt blue glassware was hand-blown by Francis Whitmore and especially made for this dollhouse. The flatware is also cast in solid gold. The needlepoint rug was handcrafted by Marianne West. It contains over a thousand stitches. Other glassware in the dollhouse is also made by Francis Whitmore. The stopper and the decanter actually comes out. The blown glass, spun glass, is also by Francis Whitmore. The oil painting in the dining room, as well as those throughout the house, were painted by my grandmother. Pottery on the upper plate rails are made by Jim Clark's Pottery, and the other blown glass and the etagere, including the punch bowl set, is also made by Francis Whitmore. The country kitchen is complete with a roper stove, a glassed-in pantry, and a utility closet. The copperware was handcrafted in New York, and the knives were crafted to perfection by miniaturist Jason Getson. A tin top table and baker's cupboard, handcrafted and signed, complete the perfect dream kitchen. Except there's also a tiny little mouse about to step in a trap. He's hand carved from ivory and is very rare. He's hiding under the roper stove. Our kitchen maid was created by Elaine Kushner. She is the character doll of Prissy from Gone with the Wind. 
She's so realistic and lifelike, you can see and feel her personality. The second floor consists of the master bedroom, the bathroom, and the library. In the master bedroom, the canopy bed was created by master miniaturist George Becker. It is hand carved and exquisitely dressed by Doris Phillips in ivory satin, a spray of roses, fine satin ribbons and lace. The bay window was dressed to match as well. The silhouettes in the room were hand cut by my mother. The porcelain boudoir set was also crafted by Sue Sherrill. It consists of a bowl and pitcher, a toothbrush holder, and a soap dish. The silhouettes in the hallway were also hand cut by my mother. The Victorian bathroom ensemble consists of a claw tub and a well-appointed dressing table. The comb and brush set is hand carved out of tortoise shell. The manicure set is exactly detailed to that of a life-size set. The entire set could fit on a dime. It is a treasured creation by miniaturist engineer Bob Sutton, and it really works. The library has a warmly lit fireplace, another of Marianne West's needlepoint rugs, and many, many books. The nature and wildlife scenes are pen and ink sketches illustrated by my mother. Many of the books in the bookcase actually open and have print and photos in them. The third floor consists of a children's room, a nursery, grand hall and ballroom, and a banquet room. The children's room contains two twin-sized Jenny Lynn beds with beautifully hand-turned spindles created by miniaturist Judith Shellhots. Notice the hand-painted wall mural. It was especially designed and painted by my grandmother. On one bed is another of Elaine Kushner's dolls, beautifully lifelike. This doll is that of a little girl plopped on her belly with an excited look of Christmas Day on her face. The bedroom is brimming with toys. It's every child's dream.
Behind these French doors is the baby's nursery. It's an enchanting little baby's room, bright and cheery. The baby's bed is handcrafted to replicate the Victorian canopy style. It is completely dressed in lace. The baby's carriage, signed by Nancy West, is a lovely creation of wire and canvas. There's also a special gray stuffed elephant. It's very much like the one I had as a child. The grand hall is the formal entrance to the ballroom. It is adorned with a crystal chandelier and an impressive display of art. The paintings that grace the wall are framed photographs of the actual oil paintings by my grandmother, Estelle Jensen. The portraits on the stair wall are those of my great-grandparents. The ballroom, with all its splendor and elegance, has a marble dance floor, a balcony art gallery, and an orchestra section. The ladies are dressed in three shades of rose. They are of the same material used in the dresses of my own wedding attendants. The instruments are exquisitely detailed. They include brass instruments, a violin, harp, and a Harolo cello. The grand piano was created by Ralph Partolo with its finely detailed mural on the inside lid. The chandeliers on this floor are of crystal and were created and electrified by myself. What grand affair would be complete without a banquet fit for a king? The banquet room is decorated in gold and delicate shades of green and pink. The marble banquet table is filled with delicious foods. The sideboard tables include cranberry crystal. There are desserts and fruit punch, coffee and tea. Our costume gentleman is an original Peggy Nesbitt doll. The Grand Hall staircase takes us to the fourth floor. 